Today at Craze Performance Repair, we are going to be doing part three of a displacement on demand delete. So if you have not seen the other parts, I will put them up above. Otherwise, let's go ahead and get rolling with this displacement on demand delete continuation. So we're going to start this off real quick with a little bit of lifter work. I did not do much talking while I was working on this particular part of the vehicle. I was feeling a little bit under the weather. So I have a little bit of narration in there. But regardless, this video is going to go ahead and continue and you guys get to see uh, the finishing process of this. I will include another video uh, for the tuning out the software. I will put it separate just for simplicity's sake and making it a little bit easier for you guys. All right, you can see I got a head here. It is freshly machined. Now, you, whenever you pull these heads off, it's a absolute must to get them not only surfaced, but the valves have to be ground. Now, I can see the margins got a little bit thin on here. Uh, when I picked it up from the machinist, he had told me that the margins still had some left, but they did get a lot of machining on the intake valves they were very badly warped and that is extremely common on GM's even a brand new GM they're just crummy you get valves brand new from the dealer and they wobble it's it's just terrible they're the junk that they sell for valves is just crazy but anyway I'm gonna go ahead and get this on get them all torqued down Now we are going to go ahead and put the rocker arms and push rods in. I'm going to put some assembly lube on there. The link is below for what I use. It's my preferred product. Now, uh, now uh, when I tighten these rocker arms down, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk them down a little bit, let them rest so that they can collapse the lifters. Now I have to finish up the rest of the assembly. So we're kind of skipping around a little bit if you haven't noticed, but I have to bolt the intake on, the valve covers on, so on and so forth, but we're gonna make that go extremely quick for you. The reason for skipping around was because I did not have the two rockers and push rods that I needed yet. I was still waiting for them and shipping. If you notice when I'm tightening these down, I'm doing a little bit at a time. That way I can give the lifters a little bit of time to collapse. Now just for a little protection, I'm going to throw this up here and just let it sit until the parts come in. All right, a little something to make sure that you do when you put these spark plug ends on is pay attention to the sound that it makes and feel that it does. So when you push it on, you want to get it till it comes to a stop, just barely comes to a stop, and you want to kind of feel for the center thing to line up with the center of the spark plug. And then when you give it a push, you want to listen real close just for that little click that it'll make. There, did you hear that little click? That's the click we're looking for. Little bonus tip, temporary disablement of the displacement on the band. There's a plug going into the brake booster. So if you need to get to a tuner, the, the rumor has it that you can unplug this plug for that brake booster sensor. It's a, like a vacuum sensor. And if you unplug that, you're able to 
disable it temporarily. Of course, you'll have an engine light and probably traction control, ABS, everything else. But the theory is that you can unplug that as a temporary solution to go get it tuned. I would not run that for long though because you don't know if there's anything else wrong with your motor. Okay, you can see I have an installer here. It's a homemade jobber. Basically, I have the threads that fit in the crank from an old bolt, and I have fine threads over here. The fine threads are what do all the work. That way, I can uh, install it without wrecking any new bolts or, or whatever. Let's go ahead and uh, get the new bolt in. Okay, so I'm torquing the bolt. I uh, have to torque it to 100, which I already did. Now I have to loosen it, which I already did, and then put this on here and torque it again. But now I have to torque it to 59 foot-pounds and then 125 degrees of rotation. Okay, so now it's turning. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go in the flex plate. There's a little hole in the bottom. I have to put something in there to keep the flex plate or the crankshaft from turning and then I'll be able to finish torquing this thing down. Okay, I have a torque to 59 foot-pounds. I am now going to take and mark the uh, bolt here. What I need to do is I need to mark the bolt so that I can know where it started. And I also need to mark where it needs to end. Okay, so now I have a mark for where it started. I marked the pulley and the bolt. You guys probably can't see that, but now the reason I marked it is I need to turn it 125 degrees and if the thing I have in the flywheel flex plate area were to slip for any reason, I would lose my rotation of where it is. I'm going to grab my torque wrench that has the degree angle on it, uh, but if it slips that degree angle is going to do me no good. So that's why I marked it, just a double, like a safety kind of a thing. Okay, I moved you guys over there because of leverage, so I'm going to be pulling towards me with this thing and pulling is a lot easier than trying to push okay there's a partial turn 68 degrees 110 degrees so I'm almost there okay 121 I want 125 why did it show red Okay, I'm gonna go an extra couple degrees here. There. Took 277 foot-pounds to get the amount of turn that I needed. So that is, uh, that's interesting. That's why it went red, because the torque wrench is only rated for 250 foot-pounds. Uh, so it went red a little bit early, but uh, I still got the correct degree in there. That's, that's interesting. I did not know the torque wrench would do that. I was not aware of that. So now, since it didn't slip, um, I believe I'm correct, but I'm going to go ahead and look at my mark anyway. I didn't put the mark in there just for it, just in case. I also put it in there as a double checking point. Yeah, it's a little past 90, so it's got to be pretty close. It's somewhere between 90 and 135, so it's got to be pretty darn close, maybe 120. So it's a little off, but it, it's... It's very, very close, so I'm just going to leave it alone. It's got plenty of torque on it. I also put a little bit of blue Loctite on the threads because I just don't trust it. So these bolts are quite heavy duty, so it's torque now. We're good to go. All right, we're going to install this AC belt. Now this is a stretch belt style. There's a bolt hole here, and that's for the tensioner. Some of them have a tensioner, the older ones. This one does not. It's a 2012. I think 2011 had it as well. Now. This style with the stretch belt is superior to the other style. The ones with the tensioner, they had problems for a little while where the tensioner would flop some. So 
You can remove that tensioner and get a belt for one of these, and you can eliminate that tensioner if you have one of the older styles. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and show you how I install these belts. They are kind of a pain in the butt, but you can even do them without the special tool, which is what I'm gonna show you here. All right, so when installing these AC belts, you wanna put it so that it's behind the pulley on this side, and then you wanna have it on this pulley for the AC. And you can take and throw this up over here like this, as best you can by hand, and as far as you can. And then you gotta be careful with your fingers down in this corner because there's a sensor bracket there and it will get you. So make sure you're careful with that. But now, once you're holding it, you turn this over. And if it stays, then you can move over to this side here and keep it on the AC pulley correctly. And the other side will automatically follow and land in its position. And uh, you know what? I might just do this backwards so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, so you saw me do it this way. If I go any more, it will go into place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it backwards. That way I can show you guys what it's doing underneath. And you'll be able to get a better idea of what I'm actually doing to get this thing to jump into place. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and push this behind here on this side. And I'm gonna do it again, but from the underside, because it can be done either way. It's just easier to turn it to the right. Okay, so I'm holding my tension on this, and I'm going to turn this backwards a little bit until it starts to bite. I'm gonna hold this guy, make sure it stays there. Make sure that started to slip so it wasn't biting very good yet. Okay, push this back over. Now you can see how this is coming around like that. It's hitting that sensor a little more than I, well, maybe not, it's not hitting the sensor. Doing this the opposite way is a little bit different. There you have it. Now the belt is on. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn this thing over a little bit. Just to make sure it stays in its position, which it should. It should have no problems. Okay, it's all lined up in the grooves. So we're good to go. That belt is on. Now I can continue put the water pump on and get everything else in place. I got the engine bay cleaned up. I think I have everything attached. I hope so. Uh, if not, I guess I'll find out. And uh, we're gonna fire this thing up and hopefully I didn't mess anything up. That's a big job. Things can go wrong. If it does, so be it. But uh, I'll address that when the issue comes. Let's go ahead and fire it up. Well, there you have it. That wraps this up. A uh, little DOD delete, an actual full delete. So, uh, if you like this video, be sure to like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in another video.